So yeah, you guessed it, this video is about how to choose a pair of ski boots. So let's dive in. So I'm here in Seoul Boot Lab Chamonix and we're going to talk about ski boots. So this is part one of a four part video series where we're going to help you and guide you through the process of buying a set of ski boots. Ski boots are arguably the most important part of your ski equipment and getting this right will really transform your skiing and give you the best experience possible out on the mountain. So generally I run about three pairs of boots throughout the winter but we're going to talk about all these different categories and help you kind of make decisions if you're going to buy one pair of boots, two pairs of boots, or even three pairs of boots, kind of which one of those categories works for you and also how they kind of integrate in with each other. Now, most ski boots are made of some kind of plastic. There's four main plastic types, but here there are only two plastic types in this kind of lineup. We've got polyurethane and polyamide. Polyurethane is known for being very temperature resistant. So if you've got particularly cold temperatures or warm temperatures, that plastic's kind of gonna perform in the same way. Polyamide is a lighter plastic, so it's more commonly used in lighter boots for ski touring, for example. There are some ski boots that are made out of carbon, but those are very, very specific niche boots that are really only for ski mountaineering racing. So every boot that we're gonna talk about here is made of plastic in some way, shape or form. The reason that ski boot manufacturers use plastic is that it has a dynamic performance element to it in terms of when you flex it, the plastic flexes and bends, and that's what gives you that nice rebound out of a turn. So as I said, this is part of a four part series, and in later episodes, we're gonna talk about liners and also footbeds. But for now, we're just gonna focus on these different boot categories. Those categories are race boots, alpine boots, alpine touring boots, hybrid boots, free touring boots, and free mountaineering boots. Now there are much lighter boots out on the market than some of these boots that we're gonna talk about, but these all share the same thing in common, which is kind of plastic elasticity in the flex. So it's a really great idea when you turn up to a shop like this to have a good idea about the different categories of ski boots that exist, the binding interaction, what materials they're made of, the features, and then you can kind of zero in on what kind of boot you're gonna buy. So before we get stuck into these different categories, we should touch upon binding compatibility. And there's three main types of binding compatibility. That's Alpine, Grip Walk, and Touring. Now, not all of these boots work with all of those bindings. And we're gonna talk about that as we go along, but also we're gonna do another video about that after this series. So we've got six different categories here that we're gonna talk about and help you understand how they kind of fit into different types of skiing. So the first category to think about is something like this, which is a race boot. Now this is the most simple design of a ski boot out there. It's two pieces of plastic that are buckled together and it's gonna give you the best feeling of skiing out there. However, it has its limitations for backcountry skiing. It has a totally flat plastic sole, which works perfectly in an alpine binding and gives you the best transfer of power through the turn. However, that's not really very practical when you have to like walk around on some moraine, for example. Generally, race boots are very low volume, which gives you a really close fit to your foot so you can kind of feel what's going on more. But that means that the liner can't be as thick which means they also might not be as warm for a long period of time. There's no walking aids on this. This is literally just for skiing downhill off the lift. Not the ideal thing for a lot of people. However, if you're looking for the best performing boot, this is what you need to look for. So the next category to talk about is Alpine boots. So a boot like this is basically a watered down race boot. It doesn't have a walk mode. It has a grip walk sole. So it's a little bit easier for walking around town, for example, if you have to get over to the lift. So it's a similar design to a race boot. You've got a clog and a cuff and it's all bolted together. And this is gonna be what most people out in the world are skiing in. And they come in all different shapes and sizes and flexes. And there's a few different variants to the design, but mostly this is what you're gonna get if you're going out on a peace skiing holiday, you know, if you just want to ski downhill in the resort. So the next category, which is Alpine Touring, is basically an Alpine boot with a touring mode. 
So this kind of boot basically works with nearly every binding. The only exception to that would be a Alpine race binding, for example, but things like the shift binding, a pin binding, bindings that support a grip walk sole, this boot is gonna work with that. This ski boot is for people who are mostly skiing downhill, but they might head out of the resort to you know, do a short tour and they want the best performing ski boot for that. So we're gonna skip ahead a category and then we're gonna come back to this category which sits in between these two. So this is a free touring boot. And these are categorized by the fact that it has a full touring sole. So we've got full rubber sole on the bottom of this ski boot. It's got an extended range of motion when you're in touring mode. So it's got more of a range of motion than an Alpine touring boot, for example. And it's a nice lightweight construction. So it's really designed for people who are heading out of the resort straight away and they're going up and they're going ski touring out in the mountains. This is gonna ski more or less as well as some of those Alpine and Alpine touring boots but it's a much lighter construction. This might be a second purchase on top of your ski boots that you have already for inbound skiing. So now we're gonna talk about this category, which is a hybrid boot, and this fits in between an Alpine touring boot and a free touring boot. And basically, it's got that extended range of motion, but it's a slightly heavier design, so you're just gonna get a little bit of a better feel when you're skiing. So a boot like this has a grip walk sole, which gives you better binding compatibility with bindings like the shift or the look pivot if you're using it with a cast system, for example. For a lot of people, this might be the only ski boot that they need because it fits right in the middle of these categories and it provides you with kind of the best of both worlds, which is good downhill ski ability, but also it's light enough to go for a reasonably long tour in the backcountry. So the final category that we're gonna talk about here is free mountaineering ski boots like this. And these are really categorized by having a plastic spine. Now there are much lighter boots out on the market than these, but they generally have a metal interface that fits on the back, which doesn't give you the same kind of sensation when you're skiing. So these really are ski boots that you can do more or less anything with. You know, you can climb quite technical ice climbs in these, for example, if you're getting out into the mountains and want to ac access even more technical terrain. This is really a boot for people who are heading out into the mountains and they wanna do, you know, technical ascents to get to a technical ski descent. However, when you strip away a boot like this, you're losing a lot of that power that you would get from you know, a heavier World Cup boot, for example. So you can't expect this to perform as well as some of these heavier boots, but it's focused on keeping the weight down so you can go further and get deeper into the backcountry. Ski boots like this generally start to lose performance when you're skiing kind of wider skis on harder snow. So these are really much better for skiing those kind of like 90 underfoot skis for you know steep skiing, getting out there and doing big long tours. So you know these aren't really designed for free riding, they're just designed for getting out there. So within these six different categories of boots, there will be something that works for you as a skier, whether that's one boot or whether that's multiple boots. The questions you've got to ask yourself are, how often am I going to be going uphill? How often am I going to be using this boot for just downhill skiing in the resort? And what's more important to me, its ability to tour well or its ability to ski well. For me, I generally use three different pairs of boots throughout the season. And the first category I would take is a race boot like this. Now, the really great thing about a race boot is you can do certain modifications to this. For example, you can put a rubber sole on the bottom and you can also put pin inserts in the toe. And that transforms that boot into something that you can use in the backcountry whilst you're skiing off the big lifts that we have around here, for example, at the Skyway and at the Agui de Midi. This is really gonna be the boot that gives me the best sensation when I'm skiing, and it's what a lot of the pros are gonna be choosing as well. The other category of ski boot that I'm gonna use is a free touring boot like this, and that's something that I'm gonna be working in most days. This boot is nice and light, so for those kind of medium length tours that I'm going out with clients and you know doing classic tours and classic things around Chamonix, this is gonna be absolutely perfect. It's gonna work really well with a crampon and it's gonna work really well with my kind of pin bindings that I'm on for most of the time whilst I'm doing stuff in the backcountry. This really is the boot that I'm gonna be in most of the time. It's gonna give me a good sensation of skiing. It's gonna be nice and light, and it's gonna give me a good range of motion for walking uphill as well. The final category I'm gonna choose is a free mountaineering boot, something like this. 
And this is gonna be for those really big long days where I'm trying to get as far out into the back country as possible and ski those big lines where I need something that is able to climb up steep slopes as well, possibly even some ice climbing. One of the problems though with having three different categories of boots is sometimes you have that kind of paradox of choice of which boot am I gonna choose. So for me, I know which boot I'm gonna use on certain days, but for certain people, it might even be worth having one, perhaps just two pairs of boots anymore, and it starts to become a little difficult to choose which one to use. So hopefully you found that video useful. And as I said, this is the first in a four part series. So you need to make sure that you go down there, you hit that subscribe button, and you've also turned on those bell notifications as well. And that means you won't miss the subsequent episodes that are coming out. If you've got any specific questions about anything to do with ski boots, then you can leave a comment down below and either myself or the guys from Soul Boot Lab will respond to those. So cheers guys, I'll see you next time.